afternoon and welcome to episode 13 of Sequin Girly Creates. For this week's midweek episode, I thought I would do a bit of a confession. If you've been following along, welcome back and lovely to see you again. If you're new, welcome to Sequin Girly Creates where I take you on my sewing journey but also share other creative pursuits. This week, I want to talk to you about my fabric collection. I know the in thing right now is to call it a stash. I sometimes call it that, but to me in my mind, it is more of a collection. And for a long time, like many other collections, it just sat there. The good news is that's not true anymore. I know that if you watch my episodes, you will notice that I buy new fabric, I share them, I share my plans and you see the results. For example, what I'm wearing today is one of my make nine challenges. I got it last summer and I've turned it into, this is a patina blouse top and then I hacked it and added a dress to the bottom. I'll pop a picture in up here so you can see the full outfit. And I had lots of wonderful feedback on this, the combination of the fabrics. You can see at the back there where the yoke is, I did that as well. And the way I put it inside, the different one inside and so on. Um, so I do use what I buy to an extent. But I didn't start sewing when I started my YouTube channel a couple of months ago. I've been sewing even before I started my Instagram page, which was a long time ago. As a result, I have a lot of fabric. In the past, much of my fabric were fat quarters or quantities of fat quarters and were quilting cotton because I used to make bags, cushions, purses, crayon rolls, all of those sorts of things. And so I mostly bought quilting weight cotton because it was perfect for constructing those things. If you stay on to the end of my vlog today, you can see some stills from things in the past that I made. But what I want to do today is show you a behind the scenes of the fabric that you haven't seen and how and where I store it. If you are a subscriber or a follower along and you've seen my other videos, you often hear me say, I mustn't buy any more fabric, or I'm trying not to buy into fast fashion version of that in fabric shopping. And you will often see that I fail but what I do want to do is really work on using what's in my collection. And today you can come along with me as I show you where I fit it, stash it, stuff it, and also my attempts to use it. I know there are some wonderful apps out there such as Stash Hub to record it. I'm not ready for that yet, but I did want to give you a little confessional so you can see the truth behind the vlog. You won't see much of me, but you will hear my voice. I hope you enjoy. So let's start with this cupboard, which you will have seen when I often record my vlog and it's behind and I sometimes point to it. Now brace yourself. This is where I kept all of my fabric, well, to an extent, much of it for a long time. I now store coats down this side. I used to have one of those shoe hangers and I was it was filled with fat quarters but I stopped doing that last year so if we start at the top that is all Christmas fabric um, I used to make a lot of table runners etc so one shelf of Christmas fabric in that shoe box is lots of Christmassy fat quarters this box here is lots of organza because when I do textile art that's what I use and here is an amazing £3.50 white quilt that I found in a charity shop this year ready to make into some kind of coat. On this shelf and I'm sure for those of you who like to roll and fold there's lots of fabric it's all hiding behind there that's just sort of where I was looking at that and it's falling out. This fabric you may even recognize some things there's lots tucked right back in there you might even see a make nine and this shelf is mostly planes. A lot of them are fat quarters, but some of them are bigger. But that's sort of my plain shelf. Ignore the bit of Christmas fabric there. And then I have some down here. I've exploded down on today. You might recognise another fabric from the other day. And it's exploded there. And then at the bottom, there's wadding for quilting. In the boxes at the bottom, oh look, there's the hankies I showed you the other week. In the box at the bottom are things like my pom-pom making kit, but this isn't it. 
I am now in my office slash sewing second sewing room and you may have seen this the other day where it was a horrific mess on the floor I'm pleased to say that's gone but let's start down here that's my vintage sheet pattern collection uh, vintage sheet collection I'm sure you recognize that this is where I keep all my jerseys and then there's some random bits like some velvet down there and the things in that box there this is some fabric I've washed and folded and mm, have yet to find a home for. And then right at the top shelf, there's some bits and pieces. Some of it you'll recognise some leftover projects. That's where I keep a lot of my patterns in the zippy bags. But this isn't... So now I'm in the room that actually has my sewing machine in. As you can tell, we don't use our dining table. Folded on the chair there is some things. And folded on the chair here are some things that need fixing from my Make 9 promise that I'm still working on but let's just go here there's a box of refashions a whole load here and I'm sure you recognize some of this and then we jump to here where there's some tablecloths and things that I've bought some fabric I'll share with you a few refashions and a duvet cover and so on and then we go here to a little folded up bit and further down, there is some right down there. You can't see yet there. And those. And then we need to talk about this. This started as the one box last summer when I took all my fat quarters out because I was moving much more into sewing clothes and wanted to consolidate them, put them in this box and started using them. If you've seen episode two or three where I talk about my quilted coat jacket that I made from fat quarters I had they all came from in here but as I finish projects you'll notice bits here you'll recognize and I cut off cuts off it's got bigger and bigger hmm. so this is a little bit of a problem this area so I need to work out what to do I am going to have a look and see if I can find big enough pieces to take for a swap but even if I pan back across here I can see other things poking out underneath, things that I don't want to forget. I've got, found that in a charity shop, how amazing is that? Here, found this in a charity shop, they look amazing on the back of a denim jacket. This is sort of bag thickness. My patterns are up at the top here, but there is some more of those hankies, this wonderful fabric here, and this is the problem. I don't want to forget oh, what I've got. And I forgot that the third chair has this on my Mate 9 fabric that I need to work on. Um, and well. I forgot that in this suitcase here is some refashions that I need to do that I put in there thinking they could be my working on now box. Well, oh dear. Okay, so now you've seen the truth behind it. I have to make a better commitment to work with what I've got uh, there's even some in the wash basket right now. I hope you enjoyed seeing the truth behind the vlog. And uh, I'll catch up with you on Friday for Friday Sews. If you hang on to the end of this video, I will put some pictures in of things that I used to make in the past.